at and after uh, midnight. So 50 degrees, that's not bad. Winds out of the east and southeast will end up in the upper 30s tonight with some rain developing late. Eyewitness News starts right now. Local news that matters. This is Eyewitness News at 6 on WUTR. Tonight on Eyewitness News at 6, the city of Utica has secured $1.2 million to construct a centrally located emergency operation, medical and fire center. Thanks to Senators Schumer and Gillibrand, we'll bring you those details. And a bill has been filed to prevent squatters from having rights in New York State. We'll bring you the latest from Albany. Plus, one local business has officially announced their opening date for the spring and summer seasons. We'll bring you those details. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for Eyewitness News at 6. I'm Shelby Pei. The city of Utica has secured $1.2 million to construct a centrally located emergency operation, medical and fire center thanks to Senators Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand. The Senators explained that the new building will serve as a centrally located hub and will be a fully equipped command and control operations center. It will also house three New York State certified paramedic ambulances with one engine company assigned to provide emergency response capabilities to the entire city of Utica. Utica currently has no EOC to handle large scale incidents in and around the city. So this complex will allow for faster emergency deployment measures and will increase response times during emergencies. This centrally located emergency response center will be located right in Oneida Square. And one local business has officially announced their opening day for the season. Giuliano Farms, right in Utica, will open on Thursday, April 18th. So be sure to mark your calendars. Via a Facebook post, the business invites you to come explore their beautiful greenhouses, browse the family farm store, and maybe even grab a fresh baked treat on your way out. And after more than two days of searching, police say they have believed to have found the body of a five-year-old killed by her mother in the Syracuse area. 29-year-old Latasha Mott is accused of beating the little girl to death back in January and then hiding her body for months. Police have been actively searching an area off Salt Springs Road, a couple of blocks from H.W. Smith Elementary School. But now that search appears to be complete. There are a group of Syracuse police officers, some of whom are combat veterans, who have tears in their eyes uh, about two miles from here and treated this little girl in death better than she was ever treated uh, in life. We'll have more details from News Channel 9 coming up tonight on Eyewitness News First at 10 over on WFXV and on Eyewitness News at 11 here on WUTR. And at the Capitol, affordable housing is still a big issue being discussed. Our Capitol correspondent, Jamie DeLine, tells us what lawmakers on different sides of the aisle would like to see. In Albany, lawmakers and the governor agree that there's a lack of affordable housing in New York State. On Tuesday, Senate Republicans spoke about a plan they would like to see enacted, part of it involving eligibility requirements for rent-stabilized apartments. When those units come up for renewal, if they are earning more than the area median income, they're asked to vacate and make room for somebody else. Another piece of legislation would make squatting criminal trespass in the third degree. So the bill that I've proposed is going to allow legal ramifications so that we can now, legal remedies, excuse me, to get these squatters out of the property and not treat them as tenants simply because they have wrongly approached this property, moved in, and now the landlord can't get them out. Republicans would also like to reinstate 421A, a tax incentive for new housing projects in New York City. However, Assemblymember Anna Kellis feels differently. I know that that is something that's being really pushed in the city. So for me, I would just simply say, I don't think that that should be considered without also including tenant protections. Kellis says she would like to see a housing access voucher program included in the final state budget. And that one is similar to Section 8 housing, um, but we have across the state two, three, four, I've even heard in some areas, five years waiting lists for Section 8 housing. So this would create an, uh, a program, a sister program, and augment and help people get into housing. The final budget is due next week. Reporting in Albany, I'm Jamie DeLine.
For more stories like those and much more, be sure to check out our website, cnyhomepage.com. Another beautiful day today, Craig. Yeah, the clouds uh, are uh, back uh, in town, though, and eventually some wet weather. You can see a little bit of definition to the clouds out there, but uh, as we go through the overnight, especially after midnight, that's our best chance for some wet weather. Milder day tomorrow.